Hey guys, I got an exciting unboxing for you today. It's a SR3M Vicar by LCT and it's provided to me by Airsoft Mega Store. These guys have been really great to me and I've been wanting the, to get an LCT for a while, the AS Val to be specific. But when I saw this thing and when I talked to the guys at AMS, they suggested getting the SR3M Vicar, which is a pain in the butt to pronounce, but it's a modernized version of the AS Val and I'll go over some of those features. So. Here it is now, let's open it up, check out the gun, my initial impressions of it, I play with it a little bit, and then we'll put on this accessory, which makes this gun very versatile, unlike some of the guns out there, and I think you'll be pretty excited about this gun after we go over it. So stay tuned, we're opening the box. Let's open it up. Uh, as you can tell, very nice packaging, uh, and cardboard, instruction manual, and I think it comes with one standard mid cap, which is actually a low cap. It's about 50 rounds, I would say, maybe 50 to 80 rounds. And then AMS threw in a high cap for me. And we have the gun, of course. This is the SR3M Vicar. I'm finally learning the name of this thing. But it's basically based off the AS Val. It has the folding stock, just like the Val. And you really gotta force this thing. It's all steel construction. The receiver looks to be milled. Um, stamped cover, the plastic parts are the uh, handguard here up front, the pistol grip as they should be, and this vertical grip that flips out, really cool feature, really comfortable. So a little bit about the gun, it's based on the AS Val, which is a Russian special forces weapon I believe, chambered in 9mm by 39, it's supposed to be a real deadly round. Uh, what made the Val unique is it had the um, uh, integrated front suppressor on every gun but eventually that became sort of a problem for the special forces so it's been redesigned to have a removable suppressor which as you might have guessed is what's in the box here and it has a larger hand grip with a folding vertical grip in there so it's sort of the modernized version of the AS Val and I think these features are really great and they apply well to airsoft as well so and it's a little short form it is shooting 400 feet per second and the accuracy seems dead on I've shot it from about 60 feet onto a little steel target I have that's about four inches in diameter and this thing just drills them each shot pretty much the same place it's honestly shooting better than my KJW M700 sniper rifle that I'm trying to work all the kinks out of so if that tells you anything that's a really accurate gun considering it has a pretty short inner barrel and an overall short build especially when you fold the stock which is really stiff I like that kind of slam it it's on here good and then you push this little release and then you can fold it back don't baby it slam it otherwise you're just gonna get stuck in this unsnap position it feels really nice in hand when you lay down you actually kind of overshoot and you're looking over the right side of the gun so I figure when I have my mask on it's gonna work really well it's gonna put me right down the center one thing I want to mention was the fire selector it's not like a typical AK fire selector it does have the little lever on the side here but that basically just goes from safety to safety off so in this position you can fire but what you'll be firing is either semi or full to change that you have a switch here behind the trigger when it's to the right one dot that's semi and then if you switch it to the left make sure you push it all the way it's kind of a two-stage switch and at that point now you have full auto uh, it's not the most convenient thing it kind of takes a lot of effort to switch so I would figure out what mode you want to be in before the game and the fire selector is very stiff, which I like to be honest. I'd rather have it stiff than not stiff, where it just switches into safe when you don't need it to be. And then you pull the trigger and nothing happens. So, big plus, the stiffness, because airsoft, once you're out of safe, game starts, you could keep it that way. The hop-up, it's a little tough to adjust. It's back here like the AK, and it's a slider like an AK hop-up. But it's way up here. And you can't get there with your finger without taking either the cover off or using like an allen screw and pushing it not the most convenient way if you have time and um, all the time in the world i would suggest popping off the cover and pull this back play with the slider when you're done put the cover back on and you're good to go for me this is going to be a problem because i am putting this up here uh, you can see I already have it set up. It's a uh, Russian style mount that goes on the side here on these little rails. So obviously it doesn't come with a Neotech and a Mobius mount and a Mobius camera, but 
It comes with a rail that then I put on my EOTech for sighting options and my camera for recording the gameplay. So this gun can be modernized with a little accessory on the side here, but it is, like most other Russian guns, pretty crude, hand guard, flat top, you can mount stuff, but you have to make an effort. No Picatinny rails anywhere to be found. Another thing is the grip. Um, it's a little rough. Everything is uh, steel, obviously, so you got a lot of sharp edges that are not really wearing off. Especially like right here, you'll start getting a little irritation on your middle finger. So I would definitely recommend using gloves with this gun, just because it'll keep away from any kind of abrasions or any kind of sore spots from pushing in for a prolonged period of time. The magazine, it could be a little troublesome locking it in. If you push it in too far, you'll start slipping around. You kind of have to go in a little bit and then lock it in. Sort of suffers from that same issue a lot of the AKs do where you gotta be real conscious when you're putting the mag in that you're grabbing the little stump that keeps it in place. Now, let's get to the accessory because that's what makes this gun really versatile. So let's open this now and I'll show you what it is. Now I've played all, all this stuff before so I'm not gonna act like I'm unboxing it, but imagine, it's probably similar to what you get when you're unboxing it. So here's this thing, it's extremely heavy and obviously an airsoft, well not obviously because I think there's a version of this for maybe a different gun system that actually has an internal barrel but this one is just decorative. It just has a hole through and through that you could put an internal barrel through but when you add it to here you're just screwing on a huge super heavy pipe basically and it's very sturdy. I think again, made out of steel like the rest of everything. There's a little notch you push in here that lets it get real close to the body and then you lock it in when it's in place. And now you essentially have the AS valve with this added. It's a little bit different looking with this cap here which also unscrews. I wouldn't recommend that because then it took me about 15 minutes to put it back together. But when you add this, now you can run a long internal barrel here and make this possibly a DMR sniper. Of course, it has the full auto feature, so that's something to keep in mind if you can try to use it as that. But if you're gonna keep the internal barrel as is, I would not recommend adding this just for looks. First of all, it makes your gun almost twice as long with the stock folded. As you can see, this is about the center point where you add this, so. And it's extremely heavy because everything's just sprung out here. I mean, Oh, you do not want to hold this out for more than a few seconds and of course the lighter something is the better in airsoft or in the real world so uh, good for looks good if you put an internal barrel in would not recommend with the current barrel so I'm gonna take it off whoo all right talk about the gun a little bit I've shot it a few times man this thing just mm, sounds so good rate of fire is nice around 16 BBs per second the high cap has a hard time keeping up with how fast the gearbox is cycling I am using an 11.1 lipo battery in here um, so the high caps I would not really recommend they do about see it feels like about 10 to 15 rounds every time you wind it and that's just for this kind of high rate of fire you're just going through it in one burst really so go for the mid caps. The nice thing is they're ten dollars a pop, which is really cheap. Uh, you could pick up a bunch of them, and you'll be all set. The battery space. This is a tough part. I don't. I almost don't want to take it apart because it took me so long to get it in there. So as you can see, you got a folding handguard here. So can't put a battery here if you want to use the handguard feature. Um, I guess the solution is to put it here if you don't have a battery that fits up here but you'll have it hanging down here and you'll have to zip tie it in. Not the most beautiful solution, especially on this nice looking gun. You kind of, I hate seeing the battery externally. So I fussed with it for a while and I managed to shove it in here. It's an Echo One LiPo battery, 11.1. And I'm gonna take this apart and hopefully I'll be able to get it back in after I take it apart. But there's a button you push up here and then you slide the hand guard over it in theory Ugh. all right there we go so before it's disturbed that's how I got the battery in here as you can see battery is a line up here it's a brick battery it's fairly common you could get it at almost every store 
So it's sitting up here. I ran the wires under just to give it a little more room up here so I don't have the connection here and the, uh, the little charge wire. Oops. And it's super tight. You really have to jam it on there. I feel like I'm going to break something when I'm putting it on. As I understand it, LCT has a specific battery that fits in here. I don't have it on hand. So if you're getting this gun, probably get that with it as well. But you could fit an 11.1 LiPo like this in here. These are readily available. So lay it on top here, run all the wires out of the way under the barrel. And with that, you'll be able to retain that feature of having the uh, folding vertical grip that actually has a cavity enough to fit in there when it's in the folded position. So take a look at this. If you're getting this gun, you could set up your 11.1 this way. But so far, that's the biggest downside of this gun is the battery space. It's so limited and you really have to uh, force it in there to get it to fit and it just feels wrong, but it works. I've shot it, it works really well. I haven't lost connection or anything like that. So I'm gonna try to put this back on before I completely forget how I did it. Oh, yes. Hey, I got it back in. So as you can see, I have my connections out here. I could keep it disconnected, have it all ready for the game. And then when it's go time, plug it together. To fold this grip, you kind of push it forward, then you push this button on the side, and flip it up and now I have a nice handguard it feels good either way I like it this way and it feels good this way as well especially if you have the suppressor on because then you have a little more grip out there so so far I'm really impressed with this gun I love how small it could get with the, without the suppressor in the folded position it's really tiny let me get an mp5 and you can see here I have an old beat up homemade oh, now more beat up homemade mp5 from a million years ago and you can see this gun is actually shorter than the mp5 in its folded position so those Russians know how to make tiny guns but it shoots a full-size round as I understand in real life of course an airsoft everything just shoots the same BB but it's really compact you could almost use it as secondary except for the fact that it weighs a million pounds because it's all steel construction but then again if you want to make it a long-range gun flip this out put the suppressor on inner barrel and now you have a basically a AS Val as far as size and capability so big shout out to the Airsoft Mega Store for supplying this gun to me. I've been waiting for an LCT to come to the US and they're one of the few American retailers that actually have them in stock and have the full line it seems. So definitely check them out if you're looking for this gun. I would recommend it so far from what I've played with it. Uh, like I said, the only downside is the battery space and stay away from the high caps. Get a few of these really inexpensive mid caps. Otherwise, the gun is solid. Uh, the materials are top-notch. It feels like my real sword SVD here as far as uh, fit and finish. Really sturdy. So far, I recommend it. Looking forward to taking it out to a game and put it through its paces and then we'll really know how it performs because to me, the game is a true measure of a gun's ability. So make sure you subscribe, stay tuned so you can catch the gameplay video and I'll see you on the next one.